Hello my yarn friends. Today I want to show you how to do moss stitch. That is what I am showing you here is uh, moss stitch triangle scarf and it is my favorite stitch actually and that's for a couple of different reasons. One, it has a really fantastic drape to it meaning it's not a stiff fabric when you make something with this stitch as long as you're using a hook size that is a little bit larger than that particular yarn calls for. So this is a size 3 yarn and as you can see it gathers on itself really nicely and it doesn't remain really rigid and structured. I cannot stand that in a scarf. Um, so this also has a gradient yarn uh, one example of gradient yarn is Lion Brand Mandala. I love making this scarf with that because the gradient uh, doesn't look really jarring like it would if you had a taller stitch like double crochet. When that abrupt yarn change happens, you really can't tell which row it's a part of and it looks really nice. So these two colors uh, probably don't look like they would go very well together, but as you can see, it travels from one to the other really nicely. So I want to show you how to do moss stitch if you are working on making something for uh, yourself. Maybe you want to make a blanket, a sweater, a scarf out of it. Um, just a couple of tips and tricks to make sure that uh, that's a nice fun project for you to do. Now before I get too far ahead of myself, this is my moss stitch triangle scarf. I do have two videos on my YouTube channel that show you how to make this exact project. I just wanted to foc on, focus on moss stitch itself today. So let's say I want to make a really giant moss stitch blanket. I'm going to do this exact thing. I'm just going to start with a longer chain than I'm going to do with you now. So whatever size of project you want is based on your starting chains. You'll want to just choose uh, an odd number of starting chains. So let's say I'm going to go, let's see, six, seven, eight, nine, just for our purposes here. But if I'm making a blanket, I'm probably going to go somewhere around the 100 to 150 range, depending on, well, 101 and 151, because I want an odd number. And that's because we're going to skip this first chain here and move into the rest of the chain. So that will actually give us an even number. So what I'm going to do is work a row of single crochet stitches. So to single crochet, you insert your hook, yarn over, pull it back through, yarn over, and pull through two. So I'm going to do that all the way along my starting chain row. That's because I really like to have a foundation row in the beginning. Otherwise, your edge of your blanket will uh, not have as much structure as I would like. So I use blanket as my example because I have just a whole bunch of yarn and I want to make a blanket but I don't have the patience for it. So here we are making a little square. So now I have eight single crochet stitches. And the beautiful thing is the, this next row and every row after that is gonna be exactly the same. So I'm going to chain up one, turn my work, and I'm gonna start every row by working under those first bunny ears, under both loops. So single crochet, and then now as I work across, no matter how long my foundation row is, I'm going to do chain one, skip a stitch, and then work into the next stitch. So I'm going to single crochet, chain one, skip one, and single crochet. So it's nice repetitive. Single, single crochet, chain one, skip one, and then skip uh, single crochet again. Now as you can see, I've reached the end. There's only one stitch left. I'm not, I can't skip it, so I'm not going to chain one here. I'm just going to work two single crochets next to each other in the end. So you've chained one, skipped one all the way across. At the end, you're just going to put two single crochets together. The nice thing about that is when I chain up and turn my work, it creates that skippable stitch right here. So I'm going to do a single crochet into the first one, just like I did at the start of the last row. Single crochet chain one, skip one, skip that first stitch, and now I can work into that chain one space. Now this is a really large size yarn, and the chief complaint I hear with this moss stitch triangle scarf is that it's really hard to see where your chain ones are. So that's going to take some time, but if you're not too sure and you're having trouble with it, I would suggest pulling up on it. So here's the edge of that. If you pull up, it really 
highlights where those holes are. So this is again a really big yarn so you can see it kind of easily but if you're not sure you can give it a nice tug up and see where that gap is. Or another thing is, and this I get made fun of for this, so hang in there with me. Um, the back of a single crochet stitch has pants. So <laughs> these two little lines here to me look like pants, and that is the back of the stitch. So we want to ignore the pants. We want to go between the pants. So, so I use a lot of ridiculous terminology in my crocheting and when I teach, so hopefully that helps somebody. So I'm going to insert my hook here, single crochet into that space, chain one, skip one, and we're going to do that all the way across. Last chain one space, and we only have one stitch left, so we're not going to chain one, skip one, we're just going to single crochet into that last one. And that same thing that we just did, we just laid two rows of moss stitch, uh, we're just going to keep repeating that. So chain one, turn your work, single crochet into the first space, chain one, skip one, single crochet across, and just keep repeating that until your project is done. That's the beautiful thing here. So now you can really binge watch that show on Netflix because you don't have to count. Uh, you can actually have a conversation without telling somebody, uh, don't talk to me, I'm counting. Um, and now we've gotten to the end here. I know I'm kind of all over the place. I've had too much coffee. Uh, single crochet into the last chain one space, and we're going to single crochet right away again into just the last space. And just keep on repeating that until we're done. I can keep showing you more how to do it, but uh, that is why I start with an odd number of chains so that it works out to an even number of stitches and it becomes repetitive and you don't have to think about it anymore after that. So that is Moss Stitch. I hope you love it as much as I do. I have made sweaters, scarves, blankets, uh, all kinds of things out of Moss Stitch. It is my favorite stitch. Um, Please let me know what other stitches you'd like me to cover. I did a, a survey over on my Instagram of what you guys wanted to see on my YouTube channel and stitch tutorials won overwhelmingly. So let me know in the comments what you'd like to see from me and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much.